Well, today we're going to start with our Holy Spirit, and then we'll go back to the Great Tribulation, because everyone needs to know how to be born again. And this is going to be a little message on that first. And I pray that everybody that's listening today, if you don't know Christ as Savior, after I get through with these lessons, you will want to know that you are truly born again. So here's a, one of the Bible verses, and I give these to you because you are to copy them and study. I'm asking all of you, no matter who it is, to read the book of John first and 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, and you will not be confused. It teaches you all of the things that we need. So here is one of the main, main Bible verses. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Now this, don't forget, this is Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. And this will show you how you know that you can be a child of God. And then John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now, I didn't give this John 3, 16. First of all, after the Ephesians, and now Romans 3.23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Do you know that we're all the same in God's sight? And we're all one blood. Because you can, can't be saved apart from the blood of God. So here we have 1 Corinthians 15.3 and 4. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day. Listen at that. According to the scriptures. This is how we know that we are a child of God and then, but as many as received him, John 1, 12, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. You see, you can't doubt and do anything for the Lord. It has to be by faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Second Peter 3.18 But grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You see, you can't eat your food without helping your body. You can't eat, eat, eat anything, but get the Word of God. This is the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. You have to know them. You can't just hear them. You have to continue, and they live that in you. I am the way. This is John 14, 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. This is the only way. Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. And in Christ, we have redemption through his blood. He loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. And this is, you have to know, you have to have the blood of Jesus Christ before the Spirit of God. He has to come first. By his own blood, Christ entered in once into the holy place. It has to be through the blood of Jesus Christ. And then, be, you don't have a spirit. There's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. But you don't have a spirit until you're born again. So here, we, here's what we have. We have a body and a soul. And we can't get to heaven without a spirit. So, God the Father, God the Father, God the Son, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit, three and one, one and three. So greater is he that is in you. This is the Spirit of God, and you cannot get to heaven without this. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Satan has nothing to offer you. Satan has nothing to offer you. So this is 
why you have to know Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You see, we're all the same people. He loves us the same. And that's why we must know the Word of God. And then we come today to Heavenly Divine Eternal Spirit. This is 1 Corinthians 12.14, for the body is not one member, but many. We're all one in Christ. This is how we know this. And then John 4, 13. Hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us because he hath given us of his spirit. 2 Corinthians 1, 22. Who hath also sealed us and given us the earnest of the spirit in our hearts. 1 Corinthians 2, 10, 13, and 14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit. You read 1 Corinthians 2, 10, and verse 13 and 14. John 4, 23. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh search to worship him. John 4, 24. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Hebrews 9, 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blood? This is how we live. Let's pray. Oh, we're gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we thank Thee that we can come to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and to find grace to help in time of need. And we're committing every person that's listening today to Thee, that they will be brought out of darkness into light, out of the power of Satan unto Thee. And this is the confidence we have if we ask anything according to Thy will. We know Thou dost hear and we shall have the petitions we require of him. He loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. And this is the greatest gift. He gives us the riches of his glory, never ending glory, strengthened with all might according to his will by his perfect, divine, eternal gift, every word that he gives to us is a promise from him. You have not because you ask not. Ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. Giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet to be partakers of his divine inheritance as saints of light. We are children of light and we have his divine inheritance living in us and we are praying for 100 fold because it's not his will that any should perish but that all should come to repentance and for 40 years i have been praying for 100 fold and i'm here for each of you to accept this gift today and you will never die you will never die this is the greatest gift in the world. Your spirit and soul go to be with the Lord and our body goes back to dust. Then when we are taken from this whole body, we go into the clouds. We go from our spirit and soul are in heaven and our body comes out of the dust and we meet them in the clouds and we have a body of light. Every person today, that's what I'm praying for. I'm here for each of you. This is the greatest gift in the world and I thank thee for hearing today and that you are going to be born again and we will all be in heaven together. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Today as we come to these lessons we have seen how God is a spirit and we are to worship him in spirit and in truth. And then in Hebrews 9, 12, by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having 
obtained eternal redemption for us. The blood is God's only purchase price of redemption. So I want every person today to know what this means. And I pray that you will study these again because the Trinity is the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit is the final name of the one true God. This is John 17, 3. And if you haven't given that out before, I want you to just listen to what John 17, 3 is because I use it all the time and I think, and this is life eternal, that you may know thee. This is the most important thing. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. There is not another God in the world. He is the only one. So I'm asking for every person that has never received this right now. And he says, the, the Spirit receives impressions of outward and material things through the soul and the body. Now the spiritual faculties are these. The Spirit, this is divine spiritual faculties. Faith, hope, reverence, prayer and worship. That's what the Spirit of God does through us. And then He knows where we are and who we are, and we are sealed. I'm going to give that to you because that's a, a very important, because He knows everything that we are doing. He knows our hearts. So receive the promise of eternal inheritance. That's one of the things I wanted to give today, but I don't think I will have time. But we are, as a child of God, we have His inheritance, and this is what I want to give to you today, the promises of eternal inheritance, the best promises of God. Now, the, this is for us, but the other part is not to inherit the kingdom of God, those that have never received the gift of God. I'm going to read just two Bible verses with this because we have all of his inheritance. Every promise in heaven is ours. So let's just read just two or three here and then I will give you this is for who that we have his inheritance and then I'll give those to you that you can never have unless you're born again. So Hebrews chapter 6 verse. Now everybody has to copy these and remember them. You have to study the Word of God every day just like we have food for our body every day. You have to have this book. So if Hebrews 6 verse 12, listen at this, that ye be not slothful but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. That's all of us. I've lived that. I'm 69, 89 years, 86 years old. And I know that he gives everything that he says he will. Hebrews 9, 15. Hebrews, listen to this. These are the things that we have daily. They live in us if we'll just obey the word of God. Hebrews 9, verse 15. And for this cause, he is a mediator of the New Testament that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, that which are called receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Everything in here is our inheritance. And then 21, 21 verse 7, He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But look at you have to read this. Verse 21 is for all of those that are lost. Chapter 21, verse 8. Now this is what you are going to not have. Not what we wouldn't have. He says, But the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. That's what 
you are going to have. Now, I'm just going to read just one more that is important because this is what you are never going to receive. And this is Ephesians chapter 5, verse 5. Listen at this. For this you know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of God, and of Christ and of God. Verse 6, listen at this. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. You see, that's why I'm here. It breaks my heart to think there's any person that will not inherit all that he has given to us. And it's all free. For the fruit of the Spirit is all goodness and righteousness and truth. And this is how we are to live the Word of God. So... I want to come to, I wanted to get back to chapter 7 of the book of Revelation and chapter 14. And then in chapter 14, I can't read, I can't get it all in at one time, but I'll have to give it back to you again. Because what happened now, I wanted you to hear this because this is so powerful. This is in Revelation chapter 7. This is when they had to stop. Chapter 6 is the Great Tribulation. And chapter 4 in Revelation, we are raptured to be with the Lord. And then in chapter 7, they had to stop all of the evil that was going on and saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea. This is 7-3. For the trees... We have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. Now, the seal of God is from the ch children of Israel, verse 4. And that is, they are sealed, just like we are sealed. And then, they, that's 144 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Now, you have to understand this. This is what we have. We are sealed by the Spirit of God, and nothing can touch us. We, we give all to Him, and He takes care of us. And it says in verse 9, And after this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hand. These are the people that are on the earth that would not worship the beast and cried with a loud voice salvation to our God which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worshiped God. Now verse 12 saying amen blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might to be our God forever and ever. Now look what verse 13 says. And one of the elders answered, saying, What are all these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? And verse 14 gives us that. And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of the great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Now listen, what he has done for them, he's already done for us when we're in heaven. Therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in the temple, and that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them any more, nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and lead them unto living fountains of waters, and God shall wipe away all their tears. Now look what happens to those people, the 144,000 in chapter 14. This is how you can understand how we are to live. And they could not touch these 144 saints of God. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion, and with him an hundred and forty-four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. 
And I heard a voice from heaven as a voice of many waters and as a voice of a thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping it with their harps. And they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the 144,000 which were redeemed from the earth. Now this is how we are to live. Listen at this. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. Everybody today is to be a virgin. That has never changed. These are they which follow the Lamb wheresoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. This is, there's no other way but this book. Every decision we make has to be according to the Word of God. I have lived it. That's the reason I'm here. I want you to have the blessings that God has given me. My videos are on YouTube, and everybody can go get them and read them and learn how to obey the Word of God. And to, listen to this, and in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. And if you hate somebody, you are a murderer. That's in the word of God. And then he says, I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. And listen, that's what I, I have done this for everybody. This is how we are to live. He says, go to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. I've set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. Herein is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit. And then he says in verse 7, saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. But in verse 8, this is where the doom of Babylon is. This is in verse 8. And listen what this says. It says, and there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And then, in the doom of Babylon, this is the doom of Babylon now, you can't follow people like that. Revelation 18, listen to this, it's right here in the Word of God. Revelation 18, 4 through 8. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached into heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works." in the cup which she hath filled to her double. And then, verse 7, how, this is amazing, how much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her. For she said in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow and see no sorrow. But listen what verse 8 says, Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judged her. And now we just come for just a few minutes to get into chapter 14, Revelation 14. Listen to this, verse 9. This is after the Babylon. He told what's going to happen with the Babylon in the Old Testament. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in their forehead or in their hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. I don't want anybody to have to go through this. I have tears over these lessons. 
I won't ever. There's nothing to keep you from receiving Christ right now. And this is, and the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. This is chapter 14, verse 10. And to the cup of indignation and shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Verse 11, and the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever received the mark of his name. Now this is what I am here for. I want every person that's listening to call upon the Lord to save them today. Turn to the book of John. This is already all of these all of these promises where they are to be here and the great tribulation is going to be here and we won't know when it's coming. You have to be ready. Receive the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior. He was beaten with this uh, most amazing thing. This was his the leather thong where they beat him for 39 stripes with 12 pieces of leather coming left there with stone and bone in there. And he loved us so much that he, his, our, his heavenly father, our great God in heaven, deity, gave us his son so that we could be saved. And listen what it says right here to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto you. That's what I'm here for, you. And I want you to read these words in 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. We are to love every person the same. We can't hate another person. And this is what, in 1st first, in first John, it is the most amazing stories. And 1st Peter, you can read 1st Peter too. And this is so amazing, the gift that he's given to us. In 2nd Peter chapter 1, verse 3, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him, that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. They're all here for us. And then in chapter 2, listen to this. This is chapter 2 of the book of John. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word, verily is the love of God perfected, whereby know we that we love him. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked. Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment which you had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which you have heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true and in you, because the darkness is past. We don't live in darkness. And the true light now shineth. He that saith he is in the light and hateth is in darkness even unto now. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whether he goeth, because that darkness hath blinded his eyes. So this is why I'm here. I have been so burdened to know that Christ could come even tonight. Nobody knows, but I want you to be in heaven because everything in heaven is ours. The mansions here, pure gold, all of the blessings in heaven, and this is what hell is. And we have, and here we go, we, as soon as we get to heaven, we kneel down and pray and give him our rewards. You're going to be rewarded for everything you do.